context is king. And that's why I'm so incredibly excited to announce that Flowfuse has released its own official NCP node. Now, MCP is an incredibly powerful technology. And today I'm going to give you just a little bit of a taste of what makes it so special. So let's jump into Flowfuse. In this example, we have a site in the European Union that has a whole bunch of different sensors. We have some temperature sensors, we have some pressure sensors, and we have some photovoltaics. And just looking at this data sort of highlights why this is a problem. There's just a lot of numbers here and there's not a ton of context. You might feel like, well, just jump to the dashboard. But even when we're looking at the dashboard, we get some basic things like the pressure, how many watts are being generated. And we can certainly see that there is some sort of problem with TempSense 1. But where do we go from here? How do we resolve this? Well, that is where MCP comes into play. The core promise of MCP or Model Context Protocol is to do exactly that, to give models more context through an agreed upon protocol. So all of the data that you're looking at right here can be fed to the MCP server on Flowfuse, and that can then be used to make smarter and more informed decisions. So let me show you how this is built out before I show you what it can do. So inside Flowfuse, we have this mass of sensors that are going to different dashboard nodes, and ultimately it's being written to our tables. Now, in order to make this data more useful, what we can do is spin up our MCP server. The best way to think about this is to figure out what you actually want to give the model. And by defining whether you want to give it a functionality or a piece of information, you can decide how you want to go about providing all of this context. Now, to install this, you're going to want to go to the upper right corner, click on the menu, and go to Manage Palette. When you're within Manage Palette, go to Install, and for Catalogs, go to Flowfuse Nodes. And here you can see Flowfuse Nodes forward slash NRMCP Server Nodes. This is what we're going to be using today. Now you can really use any tool or application that makes use of MCP servers, but given how commonly used VS Code is, we'll use that today to connect to our Node-RED MCP server. So at the top of VS Code, navigate to the Command Palette, and type in greater than MCP, and click Add Server. Next, choose HTTP. Now enter the URL of your instance into this prompt. You'll then be prompted to give a server ID. Hit enter, and just like that, you're connected to Node-RED's MCP server. So we basically have three items of context we're providing here. The first is DB staff, the second is DB sensor data, and the third is DB specifications. Now let me show you what it looks like to actually add one of these resources into your MCP server. So we'll go ahead and take MCP resource and drag it down to our workspace. And here I'm going to select the server that I already have set up, and I'll make sure that I call this vacation calendar so I know exactly what's happening. For our URI, we're going to use db colon double forward slash, and then the name of the table that we want to query. Again, in our case, it's vacation calendar. I'll go ahead and make sure that our MIME type is set to application slash JSON, and now we need to build our query. Now for this use case, we don't have a ton of data in the vacation calendar table. So again, we can use select all from public.vacationcalendar and limit to 10. Let's go ahead and wire this all up. I will go ahead and click deploy. Check what resources we have available. We now have vacation calendar as one of our items of context. So what can you actually do with something like this? Let me show you. So what we can do now that all of this is built out is we can make some requests based on the data that we have. So I'll go ahead and go to add context and I'll choose MCP resources. Now in this case, we're going to use sensor data to get five of our most recent temp sensor readings. We're going to ask, can you show me the last five temp sensor readings recorded? Now we're going to ask this question and it's going to start processing. Wow, I can already tell that two of those readings don't look quite right. So what we can do now is incorporate additional data. Now we have both sensor data and the specification sheet loaded in, and we can ask whether or not these values look good. We can ask, are any of these values outside of spec for upper temp or lower temp? So not only do we know that we have upper temp and lower temp now clearly laid out, we can see which of these are out of spec. Now, obviously we're having a problem with temp sensor one because we keep having this temperature issue. So we need someone to go out and actually fix this thing. We need to see if the device is damaged at all. We need to see if there's any sort of like heat source that's near it that's maybe 
be throwing off those temperatures. So we basically need to get somebody on the ground to look at the thing. So let's see who we can send. So here we'll ask a very pointed question. We'll just ask for 10 cents or one EU, what is the locale and who are all the staff located nearest to the problem? So great, we know that 10 cents or one EU is located in Sweden. And we also got some data for where our staff are located and then specifically which staff are closest. So I'm actually in Sweden right now, so I'll go fix it. But how far am I away from this actual problem area? Well, let's ask the agent. We can ask a question like this. Christopher is in Sweden. He's currently staying in Stockholm. How far away is Stockholm from the temp sensor? Awesome, so it's actually pretty close. But I want a little bit more information. So I asked it for a time more context. I said, hey, I'm in Sodomom. What's the quickest way to get there? And if it's by car, are there any tolls between the two locations? Great, so the easiest way to get there is through the Pendletog, but it's actually pretty early, so I'm going to have to drive. And this is awesome. It tells me the exact route that I need, and it also gives me a little bit of information about the congestion tax and a few other things I need to know in this journey. So this is how powerful this is. We went from something like this that just doesn't give us a ton of information to something actionable and useful. We found out within a matter of two minutes that the temp sensor was running hot. We compared it to specifications. We found the closest person near that actual sensor, and we found out the best way to send them to go check on the sensor. This is something that can only be done with MCP. Well, let me clarify that. You can do this without MCP, but it's way, way worse. And this example is just a small taste of what it can do. Imagine all the context that you can give to all of your connected systems, all of your employees, all of your resources. MCP gives you data superpowers, and this is just a small taste of what's to come. In the next few days, we're going to give you an even deeper look into MCP, as well as a few other AI goodies. So if you like this video, make sure that you like, comment, and subscribe so you can stay up to date on all the cool things we're developing over at Flowfuse. This has been Christopher Sandoval, and I'll see you in the next one.